this experience with Elephant. We'll see how it goes. I will have music in the- I will have a video in the background. You know the drill at this point. Pokemon faints, it dies. Catch one Pokemon per route and nickname it to set up for emotional trauma. But this time like we're doing something a bit different. A two-person Nuzlocke. It's technically called a Soul Link, Let's but go. no one knows what that means. So basically uh, you and Person oh. 2 play the same Pokemon Walking game at player. the same time, following the same Nuzlocke rules. However, your Pokemon are linked. Which means if my starter dies, player 2's Next starter seven. also dies and they can't do anything about it. Plus, we can only have one primary typing for both of our teams combined. So if I catch a water type and add it to my team, person two can't have a water type at all on theirs. And cherry on top, all Pokemon are randomized. I can walk into the grass at any point and accidentally find God. And maybe he'll just kill all my animals right then and there. So with all these new rules in place, I needed to find a player too. One who's a real Pokemon master, able to adapt, improvise, and strategize all at the drop of a hat. And who else other than Pokemon Master himself? Jacob Alpharad, oh, I played, who oh, yeah, at I this point in time has a 50-50 Nuzlocke win ratio. Here's our Pokemon Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Soul Link Nuzlocke. We both go downstairs, barely greet our mom, and immediately beeline it to Professor Elm's lab to see what Pokemon he's got for us, because we don't know. They're random. In case you forgot what I just said. We stroll up to him and he pats Jacob on the head and goes, Here, choose from these three. I picked them specially for you. Torterra, Tentacruel, or Ludicolo. Alright, what do I get? Why not make Ariados? Awesome. Jacob takes Torterra and I take Mankey and we name them Franklin. On our way to talk to Mr. Pokemon, Jacob runs into a Regirock in a random patch of grass, which just flat out explodes on him. No one died, luckily, but also, oh my god. We get an egg and immediately Professor Elm calls and tells us he's been robbed and bullied. You really couldn't handle being alone for 10 minutes, could you? On our way back to help a grown adult, we stumble onto a shady figure who scoffs, okay, challenges us to win. a battle with Pokemon he stole from Elm, which we team. immediately win. Scoffs again, then drops his wallet, passport, credit card, driver's license, social security, target gift card on the ground in front of us. For the world to see! Dude, get your crap together. You can't be doing that when you're a wanted fugitive. Back in the lab, Elm is crying on the floor as the police oh, and our neighbor are trying to comfort him. And the you police walk. asks us if we no saw way. anyone suspicious. Yes, we saw his info. Now here we get to name our rival. Jacob and I try to think of someone that we both shared some sort of rivalry with. When we I'll remember go. a certain professional Pokemon Nuzlocker has been consistently reacting and critiquing oh, our Nuzlocks so far, I some of his comments it. were more critical than others okay. and directed at one of us more than the other mr policeman yeah. his name is jan hi jan <laughs> let's see if you can destroy us from the inside out anyway our neighbor takes us out to some grass to show us how to catch a pokemon runs into articuno catches it in a pokeball in the green and turns to us and goes see just like that they give us some pokeballs and we can finally start our journey. We both run around in the grass and our first encounters are Garboach oh, and Houndoom. This would have been awesome for Jacob. This actually the good. Thing. Since we only had pokeballs, Houndoom was not getting involved no matter what. And we ended up not getting that pair. But you know, it's alright. There's plenty more encounters like Hoppit Farfetch that Jacob accidentally kills. Or Geodude Gyarados that Jacob accidentally kills. Or Pyro Charizard that Jacob accidentally kills. Hey, why do I get this? And Jacob gets all this. And why do you keep killing him, Jacob? But finally, in the ruins of Elf, we managed to catch a new pair. Sand slash camera. Not bad at all. We try to name them Michael, but both misspell it, so welcome to the team, Michael. Then on Route 32, we catch Totodile Beedrill, which is also pretty good. Mainly for just We started combining the two Pokemon to create their names, so we ended up somehow with Bedrodo. We ran into a trainer who had a freaking Palkia on his team. Fun fact, did you know if you Google Palkia type weakness, Google will tell you that he's weak to fairy? and salamence. No other dragons, just salamence. So Jacob and I started joking around every time we saw a Palkia. Oh no, if only I had a salamence. Uh oh, don't have a salamence over here. It's kind of strange how many Palkias we ran into, but that didn't stop us from bullying every single one. So we take on Faulkner, the first gym leader, who has Kyogre Bronzar and Metagross Dragonair. Oh my god. After a lot of difficulty, we both managed to beat him with no casualties. I don't know how that happened, but hey, everyone's alright. Oh my god! How about some encounters to let you Oh, hello, Shuckle Suicune. 
that Jacob accidentally killed. In Azalea Town, we challenge Bugsy, who luckily wasn't as stacked as Faulkner. And as we step outside, Jan, who is surprised we haven't been the yet, yeah, I'm surprised too, challenges us to a battle, which we also win. <laughs> we run into Ma Wild Deoxys in the forest, who someone accidentally kills, and make our way to Golden Rock, a security guard that'll give us both a Pokemon. He hands me a Porygon too, which I'm ecstatic about, turns to Jacob, and gives him Reggie Jacob. Which we can't use because they're both normal types. Of all the legends you had to get, of course you get the only normal type besides actual god. We beat Whitney and in the national park find Piplup Flappy, which the we named Plap. I pitched to Jacob that I'm willing to trade the Bedrodos to make room for this new pair, so he essentially switches Beedrill with Flappy, which we shake on. Welcome to the no. team, Plaps. And then my Plap immediately almost gets killed. Wait, do you get different guns? It's been a while since I've played it. I'll fix it, I'll fix it. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. We find Dragonair Shuppet, which is an actually insane pair we could use right away. But, yeah, I ended up killing that one. Look, I'm sorry, Jacob. It is harder than it looks to catch these things. We pour water on the strange trees on Route 36 that actually turn out to be Cradily Silcoom. We kind of named them Dilly Doo and could have added them to the team to get water, but we ended up forgetting to. Which is, yeah, a pretty silly mistake, but what's the worst that could happen? Who needs death oh, man, fodder in a Nuzlocke? Right. Jacob and I make it to Ekritik and walk into the burnt tower. As we are about to go down there, Jam sorry, runs up and is like, wrong, you're only trying to catch Suicune to make yourselves look stronger than you actually are. And we we're like, no, we killed him a while ago. But he still wanted to battle, probably to show off the Mew he somehow found. We beat him in again, go downstairs, scare off the dogs, and we challenge Morty. Jacob didn't have any trouble for the team Morty had for him. But for me, I was having a bit of a harder time because he had a Lugia, which neither me nor my team could even handle. All I could do was bubble beam it with clap and pray I don't get that guy shot as Jacob sits there watching. But it ended up I working out. We arrive in Olivine and climb the giant lighthouse, almost falling to our literal death along the way. Reach Jasmine at the top, who's like, climb back down and go get the next thing for Amphi and Sue. That sword and we're like, we almost power. died getting here. Surfing to see in what we encountered Obama Enemy Snow Pupitar. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, we did catch them. Abamatar joined the team immediately, and suddenly we've got a pretty powerful lineup going on. Also, a random guy in town gifted us a Mewtwo and Weeping Bell. Finally! I'm the one with the legend now! But we had to box it because we couldn't have two grass types. All of this sudden shared luck combined with our zero death win streak got us feeling pretty confident. Which naturally means it's time to get kicked in the throat. Specifically by a black belt martial artist, Gym Leader Chuck was indescribably tough in the most bullcrap way possible. For me, Jacob had no trouble at all because it's Jacob. He had a Kingdra, which I brought Obamatar out for. Nothing else on my team could really do anything against it. The main drawback of this is Obamatar's Snow Warning ability, which creates hail, damaging every Pokemon, including my own, that's not an Ice type, which is pretty inconvenient in a Nuzlocke. I even made a, a teeny tiny comment about it when I first got him. I can, I can, I'm gonna call it, Snow's gonna kill one of my Pokemon. Kingdra goes down, and Chuck's only other Pokemon, he's only got two, is Frostlass, who if you don't know, has Snow Cloak. Snow Cloak makes the Pokemon 20% harder to hit if there's hail. You wanna know how many Pokemon in Gen 4 have this ability? Five. Three of which being Middle Swine. You wanna know how many Pokemon there are in Heart Gold Soul Silver? 493. Now, I know these odds sound pretty awful already, but you know what this Frostlass does? She uses Ominous Wind. Ominous Wind has a 10% chance to boost every single stat of the user. The enemy has she gets the stat boost twice in a row. After a lot of strategizing, we both decided the best option for us would be to send in Mychil as death fodder to heal up Plap, because he is the only one that can really do anything at this point. And what happens? We killed each other. There's no way we just said that. You're, he's good. He's so good. He's no, no. Oh my! Frostlass crit one shots Michael as soon as he comes out. Our first deaths. Poor camera up. He was so proud for making it out of Jack's gym and then just falls over dead for no reason. I got Plap healed up and basically started heal stalling, which sure isn't a noble strategy, but. T t t Come on! After literally struggling against my own bad luck for what felt like hours, finally, Frostlass goes down. Jacob practically drags me out of the gym and we head to the BC. We decided to add a pair we caught back on our 
35, which is Carmelian Dawn fan named Darfell. A fantastic duo. I was admittedly, and I think justifiably, still really salty about what we just went through, but Jacob convinced me that we should just move on. We got our Darfells leveled up. We turned to Olivine to feed Amphi the medicine that we picked up so Jasmine would finally do her job. And check this out. Already done. <laughs> You're right. Oh my god. Look at R2 screen real quick. <laughs> nah, it's alright. She also had a Geoxys. We headed to Mahogany Town, catching and adding Nidoran and the Barrel named Barrel to the team. And in the Lake of Rage, Jacob caught a Kyogre paired with my Swalot. We never used this pair, but I just wanted to mention it for reasons. We approached the glistening shadow of the Lake Beast, activate the encounter, and find a shiny Banerian Dawn fan. Not, you know, the best, but hey, free shiny Pokemon. Doesn't hurt to cat. Oop, I killed it. That's again, my bad. Sorry. Lance walks up to us and goes, Hi, I'm Lance. Grabs us by the wrist, kicks down the door to the Mahogany Town 7 Eleven, kills one of the guys in there, and runs into the rocket hideout where he continues to wipe out any living organism he finds down there. Classic Lance. We decided to copy him and beat up all the executives and their power generator. Right before we fly to Goldenrod, we pick up the seventh badge and then continue curb stomping Team Rocket. We were getting a bit too comfy though, and as Jacob wasn't paying attention, mainly because he just got a chicken sandwich, Obamatar was killed by a golem's earthquake. Oh no. That was a really bad blow and stung much more because we weren't paying attention. But we did have to move on, especially since we were literally in the middle of a gang fight. We shoved our way to Rocket Executive and Big Boss Archer and gave him a bit of a throat chop so he would calm down and stop doing whatever it is he was doing. And everyone is saved. On our way to Blackthorn, we catch Frostlass Corfish, which put me into a vengeful trauma spiral. Huh? You. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jacob caught himself both a Suicune and an Azelf. <laughs> we arrived and took on Claire who led with a Mewtwo against me, which at this point I shouldn't even be surprised. But all the rest of her team was pretty much a pushover for both of us. Claire's a bad sport and refused to think we were good trainers, so we talked to the old man behind the gym and he's like, so do you beat your Pokemon? And we're like, no. And he's like, awesome. Claire, give him the stupid badge. What? So now we can head to the Elite Four. Hey guys. I think you should go fight a horde of Asian women in Ecritique. Ugh. So we enter the Ecritique theater and start fighting the women, and the second girl for me sends out Ambipalm. As I switched to Franklin, it screeched, which I <clears throat> didn't pay attention to, and Ambipalm double hit killed Franklin. Our starters died. Dude. That was really sad. We were about to make it to the Elite Four with them, and bam. Not alive anymore. They were with us through everything. Pretty much the backbone to our teams. Oddball. Man. Oddball, let's go. Jan's gonna make so much fun of us when he finds out. As we're still mourning, the last Kimono Girl rest spams with Waylord. Do you have any dignity, woman? We're lamenting over here. We try to leave and the girls are all, no, no, go catch the legendary Pokemon. He's already got three. So I head to Whirl Islands and Jacob scales the bell tower. Wrong and what cow. legends do we find? The legendary Zangoose and Loudred. Finally, we have some freedom again. And as soon as we touch the water in Newbark to head to Victory Road, what pops up from the bottom of the lake but Entei himself and Doduo. Oh my god! Hello, Dodo. That's going in the box against fire types. We catch Cascoon Regirock in Victory Road, and heading towards the exit, Jen sprints up from behind us, and I iconically say, This is your last chance to kill one of our Pokemon, Jan. And what happens? Oh my god. Why no. I had to hit my What happened? Oh. That's not great. Uh, he we killed one of our Pokemon. Yeah, that oh, sucks. Oh. That really sucks. Darfell was an incredible pair we've had since the fifth gym, and we really grew to lean on. We lost quite literally half our team right before the Elite Four. Mm. We beat Jan for the last time, entered the Indigo Plateau, 
and immediately bolt to the PC to see what kind of damage control we can do. After a very long time of trying to stitch together the best teams possible, we ended up with this. Emperor Napoleon, the Barrel Nitto Queen, Beautifly Cradley, Dodrio Ente, and Victory Bell Mewtwo. I know, I know. Wow, Jaden, super balanced. You've got Mewtwo and Ente, and Jacob has a Beautifly. Look, I, this is the best we can do, I promise. Tell him, Jacob, tell him. Anyway, big deep breath. Here we go into the unknown depths. Will, Kota, and Bruno were all no problem at all. We breezed right past them. Everything was going fine. This is fine. We have. Yeah, he's. Oh! Oh my god. Uh. It's fine. I was shot available. On the other hand. Karen was not as nice. No, I just mean, what if he does any charge? Okay, he just did cross cop. He's dead. I I don't know. Oh my god. I got this. Classic freaking video. Guys, we're so sorry we got you killed in the first, like, 15 minutes of having you. We ended up getting out of the battle with no more casualties, but facing Lance with a team of four each is really not ideal, to say the least. But we walked up to him nonetheless. Whether we win or lose here, this is our last battle. He leads with Fionn and Ledian, which we were both like, ha ha ha, Lance, is this all you've got? And then he hits us with the no. Jacob was up against his Porygon Z, Rampardos, Licky Licky, Zapdos, and And even though it's a pretty stacked team, he was holding his own and getting through them really well. On my end, I was dealing with a giga impacting Snorlax, which I really had nothing for. I just had to pray for no crits and as many misses as possible. It goes down eventually, and what does he send out next? Enemy has the Hulk, yeah. Allied carrier down. Oh. I could really use a salamence right about now. This is what we get. We bullied Palkia so much during our journey here. Looking at my team, I don't have anything that can handle Palkia either. Except for Mewtwo. And what happens? He gets Spatial Ren crit one shot turn one. I am in a lot of trouble. I took so much time getting past Snorlax that Jacob was already done with his battle, so all he could do was watch the massacre from the sidelines. I sent out Dilly to install him and just try to chip away at him with basically nothing. And my god, was I lucky because if Palkia hit one more crit at any point, Dilly Doo and the run was over. And I was forced to dance on that line for a long time. But eventually, Dilly Doo lands the finishing blow. I was so proud. The pair that we caught so early on and deemed as death fodder was the one saving us. We're so sorry for doubting you, Dilly Doo. Thank you for sticking by us. And not dying. But that was only half of Lance's team, might I remind you. Plap took out his sand slash, which stunk. But Bastiodon came out, tanked Plap's surf and killed him with Metal Burst. I was in shock with Grenade. that one. That was our Lost second oldest pair. Ever since our Franklins died, Jacob we and I both started seeing the Plaps as our star members. Barrel came out and Revenge finished the Bastiodon, and Lance's last Pokemon was big ol' hard hitting tanky freaking as I sent Dilly Doo back out because Barrel would die immediately and started the chipping game again. If that wasn't bad enough, Azumarill set up the rain and an aqua ring for itself, which turned this fight from uh to ah uh, this awful one-on-one -on -one lasted ten whole minutes. I slap him, he slaps back, much harder, and then heals, and then I heal, but eventually Dilly Doo wins the stalling battle, and Azumarill goes down. In an unpredictable turn of events, Dilly Doo saved us from utter defeat. What an adventure we just went on. Insane encounters, insane bullcrap, friends, death, bullying, and the Dilly Doos. Thanks for going on this journey with me, Jacob. I quite literally couldn't have done it without you. And a salute. Spartan down. I just played one of the best Pokemon games ever, and I'm here to tell you all about it. I'm a huge Pokemon fan. Ruby was one of the first video games I remember owning, and I've decided to devote the rest of my life and soul to the franchise. And by that, I mean I'll play the new games when they come out. Do I have to like them? No. Frankly, I think the past few recent ones have been kind of garbage. But that won't stop me from getting my hopes up thinking the next game will be different, even though deep down, 
We all know it won't be. But Pokemon does have a few side games you might have heard of, like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, or Pokemon Stadium, or that weird geometric one. But there's one franchise that I feel like doesn't get talked about nearly as much as it deserves, and that's Pokemon Ranger. I had the original Pokemon Ranger game as a kid, and I remember two things about it. I liked it, and circles. Lots of circles. The flashbacks are beginning. When I remembered Pokemon Ranger existed, I decided to look it up and see if it was worth possibly making a video on. And that's when I realized there were actually three Pokemon Ranger games. Pokemon Ranger, Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Amia, and Pokemon Ranger Guardian Signs. Bit of a Pokemon Ranger mouthful, but I digress. I was looking at some forums of people discussing which one they thought was the best, and the Shadows of Almia one seemed to be high on a lot of people's lists. So I bought the game. Sure. Now sit down and get Certain comfy because I, I just played this game for the first time and I'm here to tell you about why it's the best game ever. The game starts off with your character taking the entrance exam to a Pokemon Ranger school. And it only took me two attempts to draw five consecutive circles around this barely moving Pikachu. You're dang right that's impressive. I guess that's all it takes because now I'm officially a member of this secret army for this inscrutable this team school no plotting to rule the world. Oh, he's just kidding. Yeah, it's a normal school. I'm introduced to my class and for some reason they've been like starved for new human contact or something I'm, because I'm they're beginning. bombarding the teacher with questions. I, Are they a boy or a girl? I'm, I'm Which one. is it? Is she cute? <laughs> so I'm introducing myself and, and apparently the teacher catches this Keith kid looking at me with a big grin. Anyway, you go sit next to Keith. Oh, okay, just plop me right next to him. Yeah, I don't mind or anything. Thanks, Teach. Not to work. Anyway, you get a tour of the school from this girl with me, meeting the other teacher, Mr. Frick Kinsey, me, who's apparently a stickler for making sure kids don't run in the hall, and this kid Isaac that Rhythmy called Mushroom Hair. Both my IQ and my height in centimeters are 163. All right, bud. After getting a feel for the school, you're taught how to capture Pokemon with your oh, styler. Yeah. Loops Just portray the feeling of my friendship, so the more loops you draw around the Pokemon, well, the more it will on. submit to your friendship. Come over here. Give me a hug. Touch the Bidoof. <laughs> uh, you finish the school day and are fast asleep in the